Be. <laughs> Got it. Okay, thumbs up if you see the uh, slides. Okay, perfect. Oh, good. Hello. Good evening. It's so great to see everyone. My name is Janelle Spanier. I'm the social emotional learning specialist at La Scuola. I have the honor of presenting on this essential topic with Mario, our PE education guru. We recognize that PE, wellness, and SEL, among other areas, support the students' overall well being and mental health. This evening, we are excited to walk you through our PE and health program and share the various ways SEL is integrated through our middle school program. Okay, so I'm going to jump in. Um, again, my name is Mario Rossetti. I'm the uh, physical education teacher for five to eighth grade. In addition to physical education, um, we also uh, teach health. I'm also the athletic director for middle school, but today we'll be focusing on the physical education and health component. A uh, little bit of background. So my bio, so there's a little chance where I get to brag about myself and where I've come from. Um, so uh, I start off with a playing career. So uh, as many of you might know, I am a huge soccer guy, um, family from Argentina. I was born in San Francisco, uh, grew up in the Bay Area, and I started off playing soccer all throughout my life, which kind of shifted my and, and kind of molded my passion for the coaching. Um, the experience that really got me into shifting as a player to a coach was uh, when I, had, I played a season at SF State, and I had a really bad experience with a coach who uh, was not teaching the game properly, uh, was being very disrespectful with us, the players. And that kind of pivoted and shifted my uh, passion to wanting to become a coach. Uh, so I, I left that season, um, went to Argentina for a year to start getting my licenses, uh, my coaching licenses there. And I played for a season there also. And that kind of led to my uh, career as a coach, as a soccer coach. Um, and so that kind of leads to some of the photos I have here on the top one. That's one of the clubs that I worked with. And one of the things that we would work a lot on was setting goals. And so we would set uh, reach, uh, attainable goals. We'd set realistic goals and goals that might be a little bit harder to reach, but we would uh, create that type of environment uh, to help uh, kind of motivate the players. Uh, the bottom right is when I was coaching at International. It was the school's first uh, NCS championship for the men's soccer program. And so that was just a little nice moment. And then on the bottom the middle, you get to see me with a little longer hair. When I was younger, I used to grow the hair out a little bit longer. Uh, but this is just some of the coaching courses that I took. Um, I can talk a little bit more in the next slide. Um, I coached for about, I did coaching for about eight years. And then I shifted over to the school teaching and athletic administration career. And so I started working at different schools, running PE programs. Uh, and working in the athletic department. Uh, most recently, I worked at International High School, uh, supporting both the middle school and the high school uh, as the athletic coordinator, and then also coaching. Um, and in addition, as I continued my career, I uh, got my undergrad in adolescent psychology, and uh, most recently completed my master's program in athletic administration and coaching. Um, and so these are some other uh, licenses that I've obtained throughout my career. Um, a lot of it, again, is soccer centered, but the beauty of soccer is that uh, by being in that world, I was exposed to different countries, different cultures. Uh, and a lot of the connection was how is uh, physical education focusing on the soccer side, but in general, also being taught throughout the world. And so that's kind of created my DNA as the physical education teacher um, as I started my role here last year at La Scola. So with that shape, um, the piece, the, the battle I've had in my 15 years in this role working in physical education is uh, creating the uh, reshaping kind of what PE is and it's not. So in my time as a PE instructor, I have come across the sense that PE is about, uh, it's a class for the quote unquote athletic kids. So the kids who are, uh, in, in, in that perspective, they're the team sports, the basketball players, the, uh, the soccer players, football players. And it's getting that idea that number one, playing on a team sport does not only mean you're 
uh, are, are not the only athletes, but any type of physical movement. I have rock climbers. I have students that do rollerblading and those are physical activities. So they should be seen as athletes, uh, but also pivoting the class component to not being where a student who is not quote unquote athletic has a fear of the class and the ones who are quote unquote athletic dominate in the class. That type of stigma is taking that out and the, um, understanding that the class should not be uh, a sense of fear for any of our students and that the class is not focused purely on students competing with each other. And so that leads to uh, what I create in my environment with the students is a sense of the P is about competing with yourself. It's about growing. It's about every class we have as we focus on different units is having a, a good understanding um, and trying to build from the previous class that we did. Uh, for the students who might be uh, have a bit closer to a mastery to a unit is having them, okay, how are you collaborating with other students? How are you supporting them? Um, in addition, are you gr still growing in that unit? So for example, if I have a basketball player who's been playing for years and we're doing a basketball unit is, okay, how are you trying to grow individually, but also how are you trying to support others? Um, so what I focus on is teaching students the importance of movement, which is key. So throughout every unit, and I'll break down what each unit focuses on, it's some type of component of movement. The students are constantly moving throughout the class. My instructions are uh, minimal uh, to get them moving as much and as quickly as possible. Um, once I start seeing that there's, uh, they need some added support, I will stop the activity and add another uh, reminder of the instructions or might add some more support to guide them. But I try to create an environment where students are constantly thinking for themselves or making decisions. Uh, and again, the key is that movement. Uh, the other focus is teaching the students and giving them opportunities to try new sports. And so that's the other beauty of PE. Is I, we teach, since the IB school, we teach international sports. We do futsal. And that perspective, we do badminton also, which is a new sport that we're doing for PE this year. And we do a racket sport, uh, which are uh, in addition to our individual and our team sports that we add. So it gives students a chance to try these sports that they might have never tried on their own. Um, and so it's being able to support them in that. Um, the other one is also to create an opportunity to build a sense of community, which is a big piece of what uh, physical education is, is, is being able to um, have the class come together as a group, is being able, and a lot of it is having to collaborate with each other, to support each other, because there's going to be moments where they're going to struggle uh, and they're going to need the support of each other to get through some of the obstacles. So I try to create these environments for them in a safe place where they're not getting too frustrated. But again, it's, it's creating these environments where they're forced to really listen to each other, to understand each other. And that's kind of uh, the overview of what the physical education uh, curriculum is focused on. Now, the other piece that we add to our physical education is the health education. Uh, and those, there's three areas that we look at. It's teaching students the importance of understanding nutrition and mental health, teaching the students the skills needed for being able to do thorough research, teaching the students the skills needed to be successful in presenting to their peers. And so the health education is broken down into uh, four components. Uh, actually, no, three components, my apologies. So it's nutrition, mental health, and we've added this year drug education. Um, and I'm just going to go quickly down the drug education component because that's a new one. Uh, the way we structure drug education is we brought in a, a speaker who I, I had sent out an email to all of you uh, last week uh, with information. I can, I can send more if you have any questions about uh, their, uh, her background. Her name is Rana. And Rana and I both worked, we've been working together for about five months on building the curriculum for this topic. And the way we structured the drug education is Last week, she came to all three of our health classes, which is about, it was health and PE. So she did about, it was about two 50 minute classes with each grade. And what we did was the introduction of Rana and the material we we're going to be focusing on. When Rana finished the, the meetings with the classes, we have worked on building a curriculum that I am now incorporating in our health topic, in our health education uh, curriculum. And so I will continue the education 
as with the support of Rana, um, and as the rest of the school year goes until the end of the school year, uh, in around, we're trying to figure out what's the date, probably April or May, she'll come back and teach the classes again. And in that week, it'll be more of a answering questions, uh, being able to uh, basically create the conclusion for that year. So what we're trying to create is the drug education being in addition to the health education. Now in the nutrition and in the mental health focuses, and again, I'm in uh, my upcoming slides, you'll see kind of a breakdown of what the topics are. Um, we do, it's, a lot of it is pure uh, focus on the research. So students are given a prompt where I give them slides that have questions and focuses on a topic. The students then go and are put into groups to do further research on those topics and they then have to be ready to present to the class. As they're doing the research, they add me as a collaborator in their, um, in their document. So as they're doing a Google slide, I get added as a collaborator so that I can overview and see how they are uh, gathering the information, doing the research, and more importantly, how are they sharing responsibilities in this role? And, and that kind of helps me kind of be able to see, okay, where is the research coming? Who's doing the work? Is it a collaboration or is one student doing all the work while the other ones are staying by? When they present, we focus on topics such as, are you looking at your audience? Are you staying on topic? Are you, is your slides giving enough information or are they giving too much information? So not only are we looking at uh, teaching the understanding of the topics that we work on, but we also are focusing on how do you present your findings? How do you do thorough research? Because a lot of students will find that there's a lot of research out there that is not correct, so it's not right. And so being able to find the ones that are proper research information and what are the ones that they should not be looking at um, and don't wanna add in their presentations. Now, overview of the PE units that you can look at is we break it down into seven units. So we start off with teamwork and individual body movements. And I actually had a conversation with my sixth graders uh, because we had a couple of new students coming in and we, I, I had them play a quick basketball game just to see where the group was. And it was a little bit chaotic because I had a lot of students coming. A lot of the new were, uh, students were telling me that they don't want to play basketball. They don't really enjoy it. They feel uncomfortable playing basketball. And for that reason is why I don't start with a team sport as our first unit. I start teamwork as our first unit. And I will always start with teamwork as a first unit because my role is to be able to build the community in my class. And so by having a teamwork, it's all Again, fun activities where they are collaborating with each other. I can then see the partnerships, uh, who are my students who are gonna be taking more of that leadership role and who are the ones that might shy away a bit. That then helps me start planning as we go into the team sports. Our next unit we go into is individual body movement. So that gives me a bit more understanding of where are these students in their own movements there. And so we focus on topics such as change of direction, change of speed, uh, core, uh, the coordination skills. So in coordination, we look at balance, rhythm, anticipation. And so there's all these focuses that we set before we even get started with our first team sport, which is basketball. And so by the time we get to unit three basketball, they already kind of feel a comfort with me as their instructor. Um, I hopefully at that point create an environment where students feel that they won't be put in an uncomfortable situation. Um, and so, and that's always the battle you have as a PE teacher is the sense you want to um, support the students. You also have to like expose them and let them feel a little bit of uncomfort because that's just, that's how it is. We, sometimes we do things that we don't feel comfortable doing, but what I try to do is create an environment where they might not feel comfortable. It's a temporary feeling of uncomfortable, but they also understand why they're doing it. And so that's why, again, we shift into that basketball in our third unit. From there, we shift into our unit four, which is a dance and movement. And we do that in collaboration with the studio that is right around the corner, uh, Step It Out. And it's right around the corner from the school. And this has been a phenomenal program that we've been working with, we did last year. Um, and we're excited to do it again with them. They're a great partner. And a lot of our students actually do work with them uh, during their, their uh, after school time. So it's just a great connection. In addition, we do volleyball. And badminton. Badminton is our first year we've done badminton, so it'll be interesting to see all the students how they work, uh, do uh, learn the game, 
Um, and again, that's our racket sport. And then we do futsal as a unit seven, which is our international sport. And so those, that's how we do the breakdown for our PE units. Our health units are focused on, so you're gonna see there is the breakdown by our nutrition topics and our mental health topics. And so we focus on yoga, which is what we're working on right now. Yoga and reducing sugar is unit one. Unit two, meditation and eating foods that provide energy. Unit three, setting goals and understanding carbohydrates. Unit four is self-reflecting and understanding fats. Unit five is mindfulness and the importance of hydration. Unit six is sleep habits and hydrating before, during, and after physical activity. And unit seven is a review of the health topics. And again, this is where it gets it, as an educator, I have to be careful as I'm focusing on the nutrition topics, because what we focus on is the science behind it. So I don't go and tell the kids, you should eat this and don't eat that. It's not my place to be making those calls. I talk to the students that the people that are supporting them with that is their doctors. And if they need a nutritionist, they can talk to their parents about getting a nutritionist to support them. But my role is to expose them and to be able to support them on the science behind what is sugar? Where does sugar come from? Understanding carbs. So I highly recommend if you can go and ask these questions to the students of giving an effect, can you name the three types of carbohydrates? I would love to hear the answers are because we're working on these things. And so getting them to have an understanding of it. And that also then helps them have a dialogue with me. They ask questions uh, and we have uh, a, a discussion as a group about these topics. And so that just shifts to that. In addition, throughout the health topic, again, I will be sprinkling in um, the drug education topics that we've worked on with Rana in preparation for her return uh, again near the end of the school year. Assessing for success. And so in PE, a lot of it is my being able to observe visible observation of students' growth in each unit. And because a lot of times in the classes is you working with them in the four weeks which means it's again, each kid gets about, they get about three classes. So it's about 12 classes. That gives you more than enough time to see where they've started in the unit and where they are at the end. And so a lot of my observations and taking notes is seeing where's the growth. And the growth again is not, are they winning games? It's about, are they developing in the skills that we're working on? So for example, for basketball, we break it down by techniques. So a dribbling, I'm looking at, okay, what are the first, when they first start with me, that first week, it's an assessment. They do a week assessment where they're just playing small sided games, big sided games. And I, I'm observing how are they doing? Are they using their dominant hand the entire time? Is the ball placed in the right area? Is it bouncing too high or too low? And so from there is, okay, what am I seeing that growth? So that kind of creates the foundation. And then as the weeks go by is where do I, am I seeing growth in that area? And again, not looking, are they winning games? Because you could win a game, but play poorly and lose a game and play one of the best games you've had. So I assess from that. Documentation throughout the unit. So I do a lot of video photos and notes throughout the unit. And a lot of times I'll share that with the students. If they're having any issues, they're saying, hey, I'm really having a problem. Again, focus on the basketball. I'm having an issue with my layups. Okay, let's film it. I film it, we're able to then break it down and be able to support. So I, I'm a huge uh, advocate that the, the video doesn't lie. And so the film doesn't lie. So you watch it, you can help yourself and support. And checking for understanding is the end of each unit. So at the end of each unit, they do, uh, the summative is more of a play. They play, so the assessments in the beginning where they play the small side and the big side is, and the, the checking for understanding at the end is they're playing again, small side and big side. And from there, I've got enough information to see where the growth is coming from. Uh, assess, assessing success for health is live view of the research and creation of the presentation. So again, when they are collaborating and creating their, their slides, the Google slides, they have five minutes. So I put them in the groups and they start doing the research. They have five minutes to create the slide and add me as a collaborator. And they also share it on Toggle. That gives me live view of how they're working on their slide. And so I hop from slide to slide and I see what's the work that's being put there. That gives me a good insight of, again, who's doing the work. And a lot of times when it becomes a research base, you might have one kid is doing all the research while the other ones are just relaxing. And that, that can't happen. It has to be a collaboration with them. Demonstration of understanding of topics through their presentations. I highly recommend ask them how they 
uh, if you can ask them how they get through with their presentations. I'm, I'm a very, I get on them really hard with the presentations because I give them enough time to be able to gather the information, to work as a group. And so when they're presenting, they have to be ready. Being ready means staying on topic. Citations have to be correct. They have to be able to show their, their understanding of the topic and they have to be open and okay to receive questions. And so that goes also with demonstration of attentive listening skills and the ability to ask uh, thought provoking questions. So the audience has to ask questions to the speakers. And so uh, the students are able to um, share the information they learn, but also be okay to ask a question from the audience. They have a question from the audience where we're trying to ask for a deeper thought. Can you give us more from what you've presented? And sometimes they have the answers and sometimes they don't. A lot of times you'll be surprised. I get surprised because they can, at least someone in the group is able to give an answer to it. So I try to push them a bit more in the presentation that completing the presentation is not done. It's not it. Is now, can you, are you capable of sharing your knowledge to audience? Um, and so what I wanna do right now is I wanna show just a quick example of a presentation. I'm gonna stop sharing. Hopefully I can get this set up quickly. Okay. So, I see some faces. Hey, hi. Got, got some new faces, welcome. Okay, I'm gonna share this one quick. Okay, again, please tell me if you can if you can see it. Thumbs up if you got it. Okay, so this is an example of uh, one of the presentations that uh, one of our students, Lola, did. And so uh, and it was one that I was very happy with. So again, they do their slides through Google Slides. I am a collaborator right at the beginning. And this is an example of kind of what a topic. So the topic they had, this was a, uh, our first topic we did for this year. And they had to go through unit, each unit, and they had to do uh, research on each unit. So Lola had um, eating enough energy. So eating enough energy is, is what type of foods do we consume to help us get us that energy? And we're looking at like natural foods. We're not looking at Red Bull or, or the high caffeinated or sugar. We were trying to avoid those ones. So Lola did her presentation. And as she was working, I was able to watch as she was able to do the research. So we looked at the history. They had to answer, what is the history of your topic? Um, how does how does it affect us? And more specifically, how does it affect middle schoolers? And so this was kind of Lola's work on this is understand she picked oatmeal, cinnamon, and bananas. She gave us the history, presented it, why it's important. So gave us an overview, what is the importance of this topic? Then she focused on what is important for middle schoolers, which is key, because again, when we're talking about nutrition and mental health, there is a differentiation between adults the information that's needed for adults and then what's needed for middle schoolers. Uh, then she looked at, again, tips. So this, she went a little bit above and beyond because you're excited about the topic. So she gave us some tips, which again, I don't know if you can read the top. It says, uh, I think she shares it later on. A uh, teaspoon for seven has the same amount of antioxidants as half a cup of blueberries. So I actually took that one from her because I've now added more cinnamon to my <laughs> diet because I thought that was phenomenal. And then, so again, they had two topics. She had nutrition and the mental health. So then her focus was on meditation. And then again, the history, overall breakdown, the importance. Uh, so she focused again with the middle schoolers, how to get meditation into your daily lives. Fun fact. So this is the one that a teaspoon of cinnamon has the same amount of antioxidants as half a cup, cup of blueberries. So if anyone wants to uh, increase your cinnamon intake, highly recommend it. I added to my coffee, it helped me out and then uh, meditation practice, and then sources. And this is her, so she had to go and she had to present this to the class. Phenomenal job at the end, had to take the questions from the group um, and was able to present. Again, I'm, my apologies, I'm gonna switch back to the presentation. Let me see, my apologies. Sorry, I'm gonna switch back. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Mario. Of course, Janelle. Okay, so you go. And that's P, P and how. So I know there's a couple of questions in the chat, but I'm gonna shift over uh, to Janelle. And Janelle, I will lead the slides for you as you as you speak. Thank you so much, Mario. I, I love what you're doing. I would completely be thriving in your class as a middle schooler. I, if I were to go back to those days, it was nothing what you are presenting and the units that you have. And I mean, of course, as you'll hear more about my background, 
the yoga, if I could have had yoga and meditation, I think that would have been a game game changer for my mental health and well-being as a young person and having those skills. And also I love the idea of just like the um, teaching about food for energy and nutrition and how Lola talked about, like she's taking ownership of her work and um, sharing it with her peers. And there's so much partnership in that. And so I really appreciate learning about more about your um, program. So um, I will begin. Hi, everyone. I'm Janelle. Just a little bit about my background. Uh, you could go to the next slide. Um, I have been teaching health wellness, human development, life skills, and SEL classes at private independent schools in both like the Bay Area and Los Angeles for over the past 20 years. Prior to my role at La Scuola, I was an SEL specialist at Nueva School in Hillsborough, California, where I was trained through their SEL Institute and have been mentored and continue to be mentor, uh, mentored um, through their lower school SEL specialist. And many of you may know or not know that um, SEL was founded and created 15 years ago and started at Nueva School. Um, I'm also a certified personal yoga instructor, um, a Bay Area native, and a mother to a first grader um, at La Scuola. Um, and so, and I also, you know, I want to, I know we have a Yosemite trip planned, so I want to do a little plug on that. Yosemite is one of my happy places and Italy as well. So next slide. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how SEL threads through our middle school program. It is integrated in all aspects of our middle school program. We have routines and practices in place to support the social and emotional well-being of the students. From bi-weekly advisory, social events such as dances and Pride Day, Giorno di Giochi, a day of learning and team building at the park, um, and all these various aspects, the students may have an opportunity to build relationships feel seen, support, and heard, and most importantly, have fun. Next slide, please. Our advisory program. Um, our advisory program meets bi-weekly, um, and during that time, students practice soft skills, communication, self-care, problem solving. Um, we also do routines like open session, and there's restorative practices that the advisors take the students through. Um, a little bit about advisory. Uh, advisory is a teacher and our advisor at the school that works with a group of students or the advisees to provide academic and social emotional support to strengthen the community of the school. So, um, these, this is a safe place for students to strengthen their academic and social emotional competencies, explore their interests more deeply and nurture the development of new skills and talents. This also helps students develop positive relationships with their peers. I want to talk a little bit about our advice. Um, let me go into uh, open session is something I want to talk about that I've worked with the students on the past few years and share a little bit about that. So I think we'll go on to the next slide. Oh, so open session is um, explores the notion of addressing students real life decisions and issues during a set time. Um, in open session, students sit in a circle or Right now, we, we did do some on Zoom, but now we're going off campus. And I think it, this has been a nice experience for classmates to be together. And they generate um, issues through an intentional supportive exchange and then listen and share ideas. The group process of what they're doing is called collective wondering. So it's created a tremendous feeling of support for students to work together and solace on their, uh, through their problems. And these sessions allow students to practice positive communication, active listening skills, as they become more aware of the challenges facing members of their community. They can build confidence and resilience as they learn to cope with their personal, social, and academic conflicts or stressors. So let me show the slide next slide. I think it's the next slide. Yeah, so here is, I just wanted to share a quick little story about an open session. We went down the street to Robbins and um, when I was in a session with them, they bring their, their index cards and we were sitting around a table. Um, it was, it's personal. So the, the students are in their own moment and sharing that I'm reading the cards out. And there was a gentleman on his computer working from home 
And he kept glancing over. And then when I look at him, he kind of looked down like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to like be nosy. And, um, and then when we, when we all had to get up and leave to go back to campus, he like pulled me aside and he just said, wow, he's like, that is so nice that it was, he was watching the, the boys, to be honest. And he was like, wow, if I could have had like an opportunity to share. And these boys were, you know, I'd say boys because they were sharing from their heart. There were some things that they were talking about that were, was pretty intimate. And I think that's why the gentleman was galvanized to the conversation. And it just made me feel like, oh my gosh, these are the moments, you know, and it is like to be in touch, to, to get in touch and have space off campus with, you know, a group of peers, whether you're friends or not, but just like in your community, I think it's, it's beautiful. So I always ask the students, I'm like, they always beg me like, what are we doing in open session? I'm like, I'm glad, but I just wonder like, why do they, are they so drawn? So I asked them and a few of them said, I just took a little note, like it's a space to get our feelings off our chest and express ourselves. It's supportive that we have each other to give advice and not from maybe a parent or a teacher, but from each other. It helps to not feel so alone, builds trust with our classmates, offers emotional support from peers. We feel at home. You can be yourself. Life moves too fast. We need to have time to pause and reflect and just relax and be. And then someone said, people need this. And I go, maybe the guy in the coffee shop. And I, I too believe that I, we do need time uh, for more intimate conversations and more times to share and um, get things off our chest. So we'll move on to the next slide that was, and this is like a Mr. Rogers quote, we were talking about him earlier, <laughs> but when you can talk about our feelings, they become less overwhelming and less upsetting and less scary. And I love that. And that's what like an open session is about, but also the check-in. So we offer check-ins to our students at La Scuola in the middle school. And this could be with me or it could be with their advisor or anyone that they're feeling connected to. We want them to have a trusted adult or a trusted person on campus. And students find that through many different aspects of the school. And sometimes it's, they want a friend to come along too. And, um, and sometimes it's requested from a student. Sometimes a teacher might like give a nudge and say, hey, look out for so-and-so, um, or might wanna check in on them or a parent, or we'll have a family partnership and they'll share something that they're like, please keep an eye out. Um, I think the beauty is when a student comes to us and like they know that they can send an email out and know that that I will be available or anyone that they know that they're cared for at school and that there's a place that they can go for support. All right, we'll move to the next slide. So some people are like, what do you do in a check-in? They wanna know what's happening in a check-in. And it's really just a time for me to be with students to just listen. Um, Yes, I ask questions, but I will share more. And these are just a couple of the tips that I share. But one is, this is more for yourself, you know, but I also use it for, it's called AVP. And um, I just acknowledge what someone's experiencing. I validate it and I permit and I let them have their time to talk things out without giving a lot of advice um, and just kind of repeat back. Um, I was trained through the Stan, uh, Stanley Institute and a lot of it was just on deep lifting, listening. Stanley Institute trains um, non-counselors, like advisors, SEL specialists, um, and um, leadership team members or admin or any coaches. And it, it teaches you counseling techniques and tools um, to support students. Let's see the next slide. This is another one, is another fave. Ask more, tell less. I love this one. I mean, these words are like, this feels important. I'm so glad you're telling me. That's that validation. That's allowing it. What ha Then what happened? Like keep following the story. Oh, that sounds tricky. One word, I just went to a um, conference on Friday at Stanford. It was for supporting youth and mental health. And one of the psychologists that was talking, she said, she's like, there's two words you need. And she said, it's just two words. It's all you need to tell people. Just say, of course. And we've been like using that around our house. And like, of course, has been, it's the validation. It's like, of course, it's difficult. Of course, you're having a hard time. Of course, you're exhausted. You get up every morning at 
you know, this time you're doing this after school, you've got a ton of homework or going to class to class, of course, you know, so I really strongly encourage our new like word is of course, and ask for tell less. I think that's one of my tools that I use in my check-ins. Let's move on. Let's see. Oh, and then just to end, um, tips to help your child thrive. Um, Stanford's um, Challenge Success program. Hold on one second. Um, Stanford's Challenge Success has, um, has offered these. Um, if you don't know Challenge Success, it partners with schools and families to, to develop research-based strategies that provide kids with academic and SEL skills need to succeed now and in the future. And um, they left these tips. You can Google it or go on their website, but these are some great ideas, I think, for tips to help your child thrive. And that at this point ends my presentation or our presentation. I just wanted to end with saying, I feel extremely proud and grateful to be part of a school where tremendous value is placed on building relationships, supporting student wellness and committed to finding ways to bring forth opportunities for more joy and connection. All these aspects are valued and deemed essential in the learning process in our school culture. And it's really an honor to be here. So thank you.